Greetings and welcome to 13 Nights of Halloween! <laughs> And this Halloween, I'd like us all to tackle a very important question, and one that I ask every time about this year as I'm trying to plan my costume out and my act for whatever haunted house I'm going to act in. That question is, and hopefully you'll be there too. Let's try to narrow that down to five key elements, and we're going to explore that over the next couple of days. Now, while I'm trying to be as objective as possible, recognize that there are simply things that scare some people and don't scare other people at all. And there are numerous scary movies that won't fit any of the criteria that I mentioned here. Now that that's out of the way, let's look at the first element. Before scary images, before good jump scares, before excellent special effects, none of that really matters unless you have good characters, likable people that you can relate to, and a good story that makes you wonder what will happen in the end. And I know that's pretty much every movie. Every movie is supposed to have those things, and many movies claim to, but we all know that not every movie has that. Take the Friday the 13th movies, for example. They're not really scary. They're entertaining, but let's face it, they take characters that are not likable at all. These people that go to the camp are complete assholes. And you want to see Jason kill them, and you're interested to see how, because Jason has some of the best kills in any horror movie, or especially the slasher movie genre. He's always really creative, but you find yourself rooting for him. But that's not the way a horror movie works. Horror movies only scare you if you can put yourself in the place of the main character or whatever character is being terrorized. And you can't do that if you don't like any of the characters that are on the screen. The people have to at least seem real, but that only holds so true in a horror movie because even the best horror movies, let's face it, have people doing really stupid things. But we can identify with them because we can empathize with them. That's why most of the successful horror movies have involved children as either the victims, or in the case of movies like The Exorcist, they're both the victim and the villain, a large part of why I think that movie works is that you actually like Linda Blair's character. And you like the relationship that she and her mother have. Because that gives you something to lose. Something to root for besides the basics of survival. In Sinister, I think I was really rooting for Ethan Hawke's character to bridge the gap in his family and realize that family comes first. Sinister also shows us that the character does not have to be completely likable. The main character in that movie has some really unlikable qualities. But if at the core, you care about these people, and you want them to succeed, there will be tension. And that means that you can feel the emotion of fear. Now, I could treat story and character as two separate elements, but I think they kind of go together and they kind of complement each other. Story is the element of a movie that is often so ignored and yet so vital, especially to a horror movie. I'm sure that you can think of at least one horror movie where you were scared by maybe the first scene and then you weren't scared at all for the rest of the movie. That's probably because whoever wrote the script or whoever was working on the film didn't pay any attention to structure. See, horror movies really have to build. They have to be exciting, yes, but they have to escalate. Imagine if in Paranormal Activity 1, the spoiler alert, money shot, where Mika gets thrown right into the camera and the camera turns upside down. Imagine if that happened right in the beginning. I mean, especially people who hated that shot anyway would have probably checked out of the movie altogether. But if that happened in the beginning, there'd be nowhere to go. And that's where some movies fail. They just focus all their energy on the special effects or on this, that, or the other thing. But the best horror movies are the ones that actually build up the tension to where you are really afraid for what will happen, where it doesn't look like the story will be easily resolved, and where they save up the big scares for the end of the movie rather than the beginning. 
Well, I've seen actually a lot more horror movies this year, and it seems like my interest in horror movies is coming back after years of feeling like horror movies just suck. But now they're actually starting to get good, but there are some really bad ones too. I just saw Sinister, I thought it was really awesome, and I'm looking forward to Paranormal Activity 4, I'm gonna see it this Saturday, and I'll hope to God that I actually get a polite audience, not the rude one that I got at last year's midnight screening. <laughs> Well, tomorrow we're actually going to take a break from this particular series where I'm looking at what makes for a good movie. <laughs> yeah, I know, this is the first video, I've just started it. There's going to be a five-parter for this. This was part one, but part two won't come until probably Saturday because tomorrow I will be posting a podcast for the Haunted Attraction that I'll be visiting this evening called Bane, not to be confused with the Batman villain. So, I guess tomorrow we'll be talking a little bit about what makes a haunted house scary. But some of the same elements will be there, and hopefully you'll be there too.